Welcome back to The Logic Dilemma. I'm your host, American Mike, coming to you from the Purple Mountain Majesties from Sea to Shining Sea, America the Beautiful. The Logic Dilemma is a show where we discuss politics and how sometimes thinking logically can get in the way of our feelings. Biden has vision, he has knowledge, he has a strategic thinker. This is a very sharp president. He is sharp. Uh, he is on top of things. President Biden is strong. He exercises. He rides his bike. He's sharp mentally. He's pretty sharp. I, I, you know, he, and he's got a very good grasp of the issues. He is sharp, intensely probing, and detail-oriented and focused. I guess I should clear my mind here a little bit and not say what I'm really thinking. As sharp as you can be with dementia. You know, did they all sit around in a meeting and say, okay, this is what we're going to say to the public. Everybody needs to make sure you say the word sharp. We need him to look sharp. I guess that means smart. I guess that means on point. I've never actually thought of someone as being sharp, but maybe I'm too young for that. As I remember grandparents saying, oh, he's so sharp. This was probably Nancy Pelosi's skeleton. She was the first one that said, oh, he's so sharp. And I remember, keep in mind, Nancy Pelosi is long gone. What we see now is her skeleton. So Nancy Pelosi's skeleton was the one that started the whole sharp thing. I just imagine them all sitting in some room saying, oh, writing on the board, the word sharp on the whiteboard. Hey, everybody needs to make sure that you say the word sharp. We need him to look sharp. I'll tell you what, he's about as sharp as a marble. Welcome again, folks. I am so glad you're here. The Logic Dilemma is a show where we discuss how sometimes thinking logically can get in the way of our feelings. And sometimes thinking logically can be a dilemma and be a problem in your life. Don't let it be a problem. We need to look at current politics is with with a a logical mind and not an emotional mind now one of the biggest problems that we have in the world is hamas attacking israel and now we have iran getting getting involved which is not a good thing it's something that we've all feared to escalate some of the the problems that we have in the middle east iran getting involved in the hamas israel war would be a big problem. Now, we know that Biden addressed this. He came out with very strong words, told them that they better not do this. Here's what he had to say. How imminent do you think an attack on Israel is from Iran, Mr. President? I want to get this secure information for my expectations sooner than later. What's your message to Iran right now? Mr. President, what is your message to Iran in this moment? Don't. Are American personnel assets at risk, Mr. President? Mr. President, are, are American troops at risk as well? We are devoted to the defense of Israel. We will support Israel. We will defend, help defend Israel. And Iran will not succeed. Thank you very much. Now, the reason there was a pause there is because President Biden walked away from the pulpit only to come back and show support for Israel. But his message was clear. Don't. Don't. Now, what did Iran do? Iran turned around and ran with their tail between their legs saying, oh, oh, Biden said don't. We better not do it. We can't. Iran launched more than 300 cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, and drones toward Israel raising concerns about broader conflict in the Middle East six months after Hamas attacked Israel. That was only hours after Biden said don't. You know, it's very interesting. They don't care what Biden has to say. In fact, it was almost as if Biden was egging them on. 300 missiles. And none of them touched the ground. Israel is a cool place. I'll tell you. Jerusalem, in fact. All of this, they have this iron dome, and the iron dome is basically a force field around 
the country. Now, it's not a literal force field. Obviously, it's very sophisticated surface-to-air missiles that will intercept anything that is on that is falling in their direction. So 300 missiles, drones, all of it taken out by this Iron Dome. It's still scary, though. What if one makes it through? Well, that's a big problem. Now, Iran has said multiple times they want Israel to be wiped off the face of the earth. They want Israel gone. So obviously, Israel is very worried about the fact that Iran is getting involved. You have a major power who, Iran's a little bit crazy, getting involved with the conflict they have with Hamas. Already, Iran has, Iran has been backing Hamas, but now getting directly involved, this is a big problem. So what do we do? Well, we are focused over here in America on letting everybody into the country, opening our southern border, making ourselves insecure. We've talked about this before on the program. How can we step in and stop some of these countries from attacking each other when we have no idea what they have planted inside our country because we have open borders? We are unsafe, so therefore we're unable to protect other countries. I mean, how easy would it have been for Iran to send a whole bunch of their soldiers across our southern border? And then when we try to step in and say, hey, no, 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 Iran, you're not going to do this. And we get hit from the inside. That's a really good strategy, by the way. That's what open borders gives us. It gives and we're not going to be able to help other countries when they get into conflict like this because we are unsafe ourselves. So that's one of the things we focus on. The other thing we focus on is this. Because you and I helped push for it. This week, the president announced over 30 million people will have their student debt so reduced. That's a lot of people. That is four Massachusetts's. And four New York City's. Even better. (laughs) Almost as many left-handed people as there are in the United States. And as many people as watch the whole State of the Union. This is great news. Who are the people who are going to get forgiveness? Both middle-class people and working people, but particularly people of color, many of whom Parents didn't go to college. They Here's the fun part. Every day that goes by, did you know that across this country, thousands more people are getting that notice? They open up their inbox and they say, wow, I'm down to zero. This isn't some everyone. BS out of Washington. This is real relief for real people. So, Elizabeth, how much did you pay for college? $50 a semester. That's about two pizzas in New York City. Ah, don't get me started on food prices. This is Chuck Schumer, who can't seem to get the glasses off the end of his nose. Are they attached? You ever notice this? I can see if he's reading and he needs glasses to be able to read, but he's always got those glasses perched right on the end of his nose, and he's always looking right over his glasses. And even when he's not reading, I... Anyway. And then Elizabeth Warren, who Trump called Pocahontas because she lied about being a Native American. Anyway, how much did you pay for college? $50 a semester. Oh, that's two pizzas. Every time I play audio on this show, I first do my homework. Because I need to make sure that the audio I play is real. That the audio I play is not hasn't been faked. It's not AI generated. I had to research this. There's a I'm, there's a video that goes along with this, and as I'm watching the video, I'm thinking, there's no way this is real. Inflation at an all-time high. And what drives inflation? Simply put, the logical answer, because this is the logic dilemma, the show where we discuss logic, the logical answer is government spending causes inflation. I know a lot of people are going to argue with that. That's fine. I don't care. The fact is, the more money the government spends, the more in debt they become. You see, the government doesn't make money. This is something the Democrats have never logically been able to understand. The government does not make money. The government only 
has money because it takes it from its citizens. That's it. That's the only way the government has money. It takes its money from its citizens. So when you say things like, oh, we're going to pay off student debt, that's billions, billions of taxpayer dollars going to pay off loans that I, I, I have loans that I'd love to get paid off. But it's billions. Things that people make the choice and make the decision to take on that debt. And then the government just steps in and says, oh, no, 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 no. We're going to pay that off for them. Uh, okay, let me, let me go back a little bit. It seems like a noble gesture for the government to pay off student debts. People who are strapped with this debt, and a lot of them with ridiculous degrees, and they have no way to pay it off. So it seems like a noble gesture. But again, remember... Every single dime the government spends comes from its citizens. So the government isn't a business that makes money. They don't provide a service or a product that they sell to make their money. I guess you could argue that they do provide services. But that's not a business type of service. So infrastructure and all that there and, and army and military and protection, which we don't even have right now with the open border. Okay. <laughs> all of that is, yes, that's, those are services that the government provides. But it's not a business type of service. The government does not make money. The government only takes its money from its citizens. So for us to say, oh, we're going to, we're going to, forgive all of this debt you're not forgiving anything all you're doing is transferring it from one person to another that's it you're taking debt from one person and you're strapping it on the back of another person you're taking debt from someone who can't pay their bills and strapping it onto the backs of those who can you see people who made bad choices are now going to get their debts paid for by people who made good choices. This is the way the government works. This is why I have a hard time with this. Logically, it doesn't make sense. Now, I'm okay if we want to forgive pieces of it so that people can live their lives. But again, we can't take on this much debt. Because the more debt we take on, the more inflation we suffer. So we're going, we have conflict in the Middle East. We have Iran throwing it in our face. Don't. Biden saying don't. And Iran doesn't care. We have conflict escalating around the world. More wars right now being fought than have been in a very long time because with multiple different countries because Biden is a weak president and he doesn't know what he's doing. And all we can focus on is paying off people's student debts. Now, who's at fault for the student debt thing, by the way? Let's talk about this for a second. The government? No. People who went to school? No. The ones who are at fault for this are the colleges and universities that took these people's money. I'm telling you, think about college. I actually have a little bit of a hard time with colleges and universities. Everything they do and everything they force their students to do is all about money. It is. They don't care about your education. Colleges and universities... Let me explain. And maybe lot from a logical standpoint, maybe, maybe this will make sense to you. But what is it? When you first start going to college, what is the first thing that you have to do? You have to sign up for your generals. You have a couple of years of generals, classes that everybody has to take. Why? Have you ever thought this? Why do you have to take generals? 
If I'm going into computer science, then why am I having to take biology 101? Have you ever thought this? If I'm going into, I can see if you're going into medicine, you're going to need biology. That's fine. But if I'm going into business management, do I really need world history? Do I really need health classes, PE classes? No. And if I want to take a language class, I should be able to just choose. Now, I know that a lot of this uh, is they do allow you to select a lot of this. But keep in mind, I went to college, too. I know what it's like. But I'll never forget. I was in college for uh, computer science. And I was sitting in a class. And it was an hour and a half four times a week. So four days a week, I had this hour and a half class and it was brutal. We would study ethics and values. That was the name of the course, ethics and values. This was in a university here in Utah. Now for that hour and a half, we would sit there and read the writings of Aristotle and Plato Aristotle and Plato. Not Plato like the the children's Plato. You know, a little little barbershop set where you know the the Plato you squish it and the hair comes out of the guy and you cut it. No, 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 not Plato. Plato like the man. So we're studying the writings of Aristotle and Plato. And after being in that course for three about three quarters of the semester, I was back. I was in the back row, and I was thinking, "This." I I was caught up on my homework. I had good grades, and I it it dawned on me: this is not logical. Why am I sitting here? So I started to plan. I started to think about college and and education as it is. Why am I having to take an ethics and values course? Now, going into computer science, okay, I could sum up all of it. The entire course that I was taking, I could sum it up with the two words, don't lie. There you go. So I was thinking about all of this in university, sitting in the back of that ethics and values course. Why was I there? Why? This had nothing to do with my major, but it was a general class with general credits that everybody had to take. You were forced to, you couldn't move on unless you took these generals. So I used my computer and I started looking up stats on when are people most likely to drop out of college? If a person is going to drop out of college, they'll do it in the first two years. Well, that's interesting. That's usually during generals then. Okay. So then I started looking up how many people do drop out. Oh, it's a good percentage, actually. A good percentage of individuals drop out in the... If they are to drop out, they're going to do it in the first two years. And guess what? A good percentage of those actually do. Over, over 50% will start their generals in any university. And it, 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 the, those percentages are probably an average. It fluctuates. But if, at any university, you have people going and then they'll drop out in the first, yeah, about 50% of them on average will drop out in that first two years. So sitting in my ethics and values course, Reading th from a book that was, I, 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 the book was a paperback book. And I had to pay like 300 bucks for this paperback book. It was the dumbest thing. One book, the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Why, why would you ever have to pay that much for that stupid of a book? And yet I, I had to because I couldn't advance in my computer science 
degree unless I took this course. So people are going to drop out in the first 50, uh, you know, about 50% drop out in the first two years. And if you are going to drop out, most likely you will drop out in that first two years. So then I started to realize something. How much money does a university make from their general education program? I'm not talking about uh, degrees. I'm talking about their general education program because most people have to start there anyway. Well, everybody does. Everybody has to start there anyway. So then I realized it was all about money. The universities do this and they have their generals. They're making you take classes that you don't need, paying for books that are way too expensive that you don't need because that's how they make their money. You see, they can't just start you out in a, in a course. If you're in computer science, they can't just start you out in computer science 101. And then you go to 102 and 103. And then you go to computer science 201 in the second year. You, they can't do that. They make you take a certain amount of credits because the credits are planned according to how much money the university needs to function. Now, don't even get me started on the sports programs. Most universities out there, their sports programs are, do not, are not self-contained. That tuition pays for some of these sports programs. Okay, so there are schools here in Utah and universities here in Utah that literally 50% of your tuition goes toward the sports programs, the football team, the basketball team, the sports programs of these teams traveling around playing their ridiculous sports, right? I like sports, don't get me wrong, but you don't need it to graduate. You don't need to be sitting in the games to graduate. So I started looking at that. First off, they make you take all your generals first because that's where they make most of their money. Because... People drop out, so we need to maximize the amount of money that we receive in the first two years. Second, half your tuition goes in most schools, not all. I, I, again, it's, it's on average. It fluctuates between universities, but about on average, half your tuition goes to keep the sports programs afloat. Can you imagine if you borrow, let's say, $30,000 to go to school, and that's low, that's a low amount. $30,000 to go to school at a state university and 15000 of it, these student loans that you're paying off, about 15000 of it, originally went to just make sure that the football team has transportation to and around the country to their games. Can you... I mean, think about how ridiculous this is. See, that's why I, I, I have to admit, I stood up. After doing all my research, I stood up in my ethics and values class. I gathered my belongings. I walked out of the class. And I never went back. Because I can't believe that all of us as, as, as young kids, as young adults are spending so much money and time and wasting it on what? Nothing. You're wasting money on courses you don't need, on sports that don't matter, and you're taking loans out to do it. Okay, so I'll get off my soapbox here. But logically, it makes sense. I mean, universities are the ones at fault here. Yeah, the government steps in. They spend all, the, all of our tax dollars and they, and they forgive all these student loans. Why aren't we getting mad at the universities? Because they are killing these kids with debt and strapping them. And what do the kids come out? Oh, by the way, I have a couple of software businesses. Okay. 
So I've been in software for 25 years. And I never got a degree in software because I couldn't get through the generals. It just was, it wasn't logical in my mind. I'm way too logical of an individual. It wasn't making sense to me. So I just went out in the workforce and started working and I made it, started a couple of companies and they're in software. So I became a very well-known software engineer and architect. Still to this day, if I have to hire people, I don't hire straight out of college because they don't know anything. I've been down this road many, many times. They come out of college ready and they've got their four-year degree in computer science and they're so excited and they're ready, but they don't have the skills it takes to actually do a job. I've seen it time and time again. If I had to choose between someone who has a four-year degree and came out of university with a four-year degree and someone who has spent the past four years working in the industry, I'll take the I'll take the working individual any day of the week. Any day. Because the ones coming out of the universities, they know nothing. They've had to have a whole bunch of classes and courses that they don't even need. Ugh. Anyway, I said I was going to get off my soapbox. Now I am. Now I'm off. It just bothers me. Because it's not logical. Uh, to be completely honest, universities in America are not logical. I'm actually more of a trade school type of person. I would love to see... I love to see people go to trade schools and learn exactly what they need to learn to excel in the area that they want to study. And just that area. If you want to go into nursing, take, a, take that route. Go into nursing. But yeah, why? Are, if you're going into nursing, why are you sitting in a U.S. history class? Uh, again, a general that every student has to take. Why? U.S. history has nothing to do with a nursing program. But yet, that's where the colleges and universities make their money. Now, I'm not saying everything is like that. I mean, if you were a doctor, okay, then let's get you a degree. But there are definitely degrees that are just a waste of time and money, folks. Anyway, look, we have a lot going on right now. We have problems with immigration. We have problems with foreign policy. We have problems all over with every country in the world. And we are so focused on right now buying votes. That's what this, that's what the student loan payoff program is. If I can hurry up and pay all of this off before the election, they're more likely to vote for me. That's, that's what this is. This is, has nothing to do with helping out the American people. This has to do with, let's pay off what we can right before the election. Hopefully they'll vote for us. I don't think it'll work. I don't. I don't think that there are a lot of people who want to vote for, vote for Biden. I think he's too stupid he has dementia. He has problems. We all see it. We see it on a daily basis, no matter how much the White House press secretary wants to lie about it. We see it on a daily basis. So that's why his, I, I just saw, I just saw an article today. Biden, for the first time, his approval rating is below Kamala Harris. Keep in mind, Kamala Harris is, is, Awful. The worst vice president in the history of our country. Worst by far. I remember the border crisis was all her fault. She was in charge of the border. She was the quote unquote border czar. But yet, look at the border. It's a complete disaster. So, Biden's... Approval rating is below Dumala Harris. That's kind of funny since she is terrible. Why is it low? 
Well, it's because of things like this. I said that the reason I was running was to help change the life of ordinary people and reduce the prospect of war and uh, because of Vietnam. Vietnam. He's running for president again because in the prospect of war, Vietnam. Does he realize that Vietnam was a long time ago? I, there have been wars since then, so maybe he's not aware of that. Or things like this. You know, uh, thanks to the mayor, Paige, can, 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 excuse me, I'm going to talk about the old mayor. Okay, we see things like this daily. Every single day. And then stories like this. One day I showed up at all fear convention and I was in uh, I was in the motel after the local motel. I couldn't change after the afternoon session, go back to the evening session. I'd come down with some young activists who a little older than me, but still young activists who uh, were uh, involved in trying to reform the party. And uh, I was in one of those eight by ten bathrooms, you know, they have shower, toilet, and a sink. And I got a towel on me and shaving cream, and I hear bam, bam, bam on my door, really loudly. And uh, I wonder what the hell is that? I thought it was this guy Bob Cunningham on a radio show, and a couple other guys. I says, "Okay, okay, guys." And I walked to the door and opened up, and standing there was the former governor of the state of Delaware and the, and the state chairman. And they said, I'm standing in a towel of shaving cream in my face. Okay, he's not telling this at a dinner party. A boring, boring dinner party. He's not telling this at some weird event where it's, he's intimate event where he's sitting there talking to people. No, no, no. This is a town hall. Posted by town hall, by the way. This is a town hall where he's actually talking to groups of voters. Potential voters. And he's telling heaven knows what. He has no clue what he's talking about. It's funny, I was just reading. He's been in Pennsylvania. Biden has been in Pennsylvania campaigning. And I just saw a video from yesterday of it was just yesterday. Biden was speaking at an event. There were about, and I'm I'm being generous here. There were about 40 people there. About 40 people. Now, I one time ran for city council of my tiny little town, and I could have pulled more people than 40 at, a, at any given event. He's the president of the United States, and he can't pull more than 40 people. See, that's what I'm saying. I, I, we talked about this earlier. The Democrats don't get people to these things unless they pay them and unless they bust them in. They don't get supporters to town hall events like this. They have to pay them. Whereas Donald Trump pulling into the courthouse in the mornings for his trial that he's currently under right now has more people standing there cheering and supporting him as he as he's pulling into the courthouse then Biden can pull at a campaign rally you see Donald Trump has more people just standing on the sidewalk hoping to see him as he's going to a court case <laughs> and yet Biden was supposedly won the last election well, he's not going to win this one. No way. There, there's not a snowball's chance in my underpants that Biden can win this next election. Not with the numbers he's polling. And not with the amount of people that are just not wanting to see him speak. Trump went to a Chick-fil-A. Maybe you saw footage of this. Just hundreds of people standing around as he bought everybody Chick-fil-A. And they were cheering him. And they were just, just aching to take pictures with him. And they were just 
wanting to talk to Trump and touch him and and touch it, give it, shake his hand. It was electric. Trump and Chick Fil A. It was electric. The energy was was beyond anything I've seen. Well, Biden tried the same thing today or yesterday. He walked into a fast food. I don't even know what it was. I don't even know what fast food it was. It looked like Whataburger. I have no idea. He's in Pennsylvania, so it's not that. But there were maybe five people standing there going, saying, Hello, Mr. President. Hello, Mr. President. They talked to this guy like he's in a rest home. I'm not, I'm not even joking. They talk to this guy like they're trying to talk to someone saying hi at someone walking down the hallway of a rest home with their walker. Hello, Mr. Biden. How are you doing today? This is what they're saying to him. It's absolutely pitiful. You would never in a million years expect that that was the president of the United States. If you saw that video and you saw that footage of Biden in that restaurant and you knew nothing about American politics, you would never, you would never in a million years think that that was our leader. Not in a million years because it's, it's, he's not. Hey, Mr. Biden, this, this is how they're talking to him. How's the weather? It really, it really is. Like you're at a rest home. He's walking down the hallway with his walker. And people are trying to talk to him. First of all, he shuffles around like he doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't know what he's saying. He has this look on his face at this restaurant. He has this look on his face like, well... Like he's surprised. Why is he surprised? Surprised that he, what? And then he takes selfies, awkward, awkward selfies with people. It is painful to watch. Painful. Oh, but 81 million votes. Ladies and gentlemen, 81 million votes. That's what he got. And he can't even pull more than 10 people to a restaurant to see him. It's, it's insane. Listen to this. You heard me say it before. Wall Street didn't build America. The middle class didn't build, build America. And you guys built the middle class. You just built it. My mom didn't live in, in Scranton since she was 1954. But when you asked mom where she's from, she's Scranton. Scranton. <laughs> I'm Pittsburgh. Uh, and uh, because of, and I, I really mean it. What does he say? The, I don't know. I don't know. And, and who's laughing? That's what I don't get. There are people back there laughing. And again, again, they laugh like... Like your rest home grandpa just made a joke and you're laughing to humor him. That's exactly what it sounds like when these people laugh at his jokes. Oh, my mom said it. She's, she's Scranton. And everybody. <laughs> no, it doesn't make any sense. Well, Trump's on trial. We brought that up. This trial of Donald Trump is the Stormy Daniels. Well, that's only part of it. Whether or not he paid hush money to get her to shut up. Uh, that's only part of it. The rest of the trial is they think that he altered corporate documents. That's really the big, the big piece of this trial. Whether or not he altered corporate documents. Now, this is a criminal trial. Not not the fake civil trial that New York is suing for, you know, where he had to pay half a billion dollars from that ridiculous judge. Oh, boy, he's a ridiculous judge. 
That, it, it, that, that was a civil trial. This is actually a criminal trial. So if he he does have a jury, a couple of them are, a couple of the jury members were released. One of them said today, I, they're they're Democrat. I don't know how they're getting such liberal jurors. I. But one of them said today, well, he was released because of comments that he had made about Trump, and he said. Um, Today, when he was being interviewed by the media, he said, oh, Donald Trump wasn't as orange as I thought he was. <laughs> wasn't as orange as I thought he was. You know that most of the orange stuff, all of that orange man, all that orange this and orange that, have been altered photos. Not all the way, not, not that they're coloring in his face, but definitely changing the the uh, the color levels of the photo. So th- that's that's how it happens. No, Donald Trump's not orange. Uh, it's so uh, it's so painful to see these people do- th- who don't understand exactly what's going on with this trial. The trial did he alter corporate documents? If he's found guilty of this, he could be sentenced to jail. Now, the judge, uh, he's being a judge. What can I say? Most judges are this way. They love their power. They love that they can stand there and dictate what people can and can't do. This is what judges love. So he, he says Trump has to stay here. He can't campaign. Keep in mind, this is a Democrat judge. He can't campaign. He can't go to anywhere. Anywhere. He has to be in the courtroom. Now, Donald Trump explains this a lot better than I do. So let's hear it from him. So thank you very much. Uh, We had some amazing things happen today. As you know, my son is graduating from high school, and it looks like the judge will not let me go to the graduation of my son who's worked very, very hard. Uh, he's a great student. I'm very proud of the fact that he did so well. And I was looking forward for years to have his graduation with his mother and father there. And it looks like the judges are going to allow me to escape this scam. It's a scam trial. If you read all of the legal pundits, all of the legal scholars today, there's not one that I see that said this is a case that should be brought or tried. It's a scam. It's a political which it continues and it continues forever and we're not going to be given a fair trial it's a very very sad thing in addition as you know next thursday we're before the united states supreme court and we're being hearing on immunity and this is something that we've been waiting for a long time and the judge of course is not going to allow us he's a very conflicted judge and he's not going to allow us to go to that he won't allow me to leave here for a half a day go to D.C. and go before the United States Supreme Court because he thinks he's superior, I guess, to the Supreme Court. But we got a real problem with this judge. We have a real problem with a lot of things having to do with this trial, including the D.A., because you go right outside and people are being mugged and killed all day long, and he's sitting here all day with about 10 or 12 prosecutors over nothing, over nothing. So I just want to thank you very much, but uh, that I can't go to my son's graduation, or that I can't go to the United States Supreme Court, that I'm not in Georgia or Florida or North Carolina campaigning like I should be, it's perfect for the radical left Democrats. That's exactly what they want. This is about election interference. That's all it's about. Thank you very much. He's not wrong. That's what this is. They have tried everything they can think of to get Donald Trump off the campaign trail. They've tried arresting him. They've tried charging him. They've tried indicting him. They've tried impeaching him. They've tried accusing him. They can't stop him. This is all they've got left. They are desperately reaching for anything they can find. To get him out. Now, keep in mind, if I was ever... Look, let's say Donald Trump... Biden's not going to be elected again. 
He's not. The, fa- the fact that you guys, I mean, if the 2020 election was rigged, if it was, if all those mail-in ballots that came in late at night were all fake, I cannot believe you wasted your one chance to cheat on an election. You wasted that one chance on Biden and Harris. <laughs> what? They're the worst. Because you won't get the chance again. If, if it was rigged, you will not get that chance again. So enjoy it while it lasts, because there is no way that Biden's going to win. In November, he can't even get people to watch him. But this is all they have. If they can get Trump in prison, if they can get him in jail, and again, this judge, he sounds like every other judge in the world. They love telling people what to do. They love the power of... I, I've, I've worked with a lot of judges over the years, and they just... They love the power of being able to tell you when to speak and when not to speak and the and when to stand and when not to stand. They love it. They love the fact that they have the ability to take away people's freedom of choice. Now, in most cases, the judgment, the uh, judicial system works in our favor. In most cases. But not here. These are... These are fake trials. The whole civil trial in New York, this one, the Georgia one. Keep in mind, the Georgia trial is is another fake trial. This one, this one at least is corporate documents, changing corporate documents. The one in Georgia, they're trying to get Trump for election fraud and trying to intimidate officials. I don't know the exact charges, okay? But they're trying to get him because of the election, the 2020 election. All Trump was asking them to do was investigate why he was losing. It wasn't making sense, and I agree it wasn't. So he says, just stop what you're doing and investigate it, please. Don't validate Biden yet until we can figure out why I'm losing. Because I shouldn't be. Anyway, going back to what I was saying, if I ran for president and I, let's say, let's say Trump was, Trump was put in jail because of the Democrats trying to get him off the campaign trail. Naturally, the next one in line to the, to the succession to the presidency would be me, obviously. So you would want me to, to run in his place and become president. I would be sworn in. I would then get into my car. I would drive to the White House where I would have papers on the Resolute desk that I could sign in the Oval Office to pardon Trump of everything that has happened to him. That's what I would do. Now, nobody wants me to be president. But it would be fun. It would be fun to be the one to sign the paper and say, look, I pardon Trump of all charges and all convictions. If, if they're able to pull one out. Look, here's the, th- the fact is, if you look at what happened logically 10 years ago, nine years ago, when Donald Trump first started running for president, everybody thought it was a joke. They thought there's no way this man is going to become president of the United States. But then something happened. He became president. Now, I don't know if it was because they wanted Donald Trump or if they just, nobody wants Hillary anywhere near public office. Hillary, wow. I'm not even going to go into that. The Clintons are terrible people, okay? I don't care who you are. If you feel like they are good, wholesome people, then get your head out of your butt. 
because and and start paying attention because they are not good wholesome people. You've got to start paying more closer attention. So anyway, I don't know if people wanted Donald Trump or if they just didn't want Hillary, but he but he was elected president. And from that moment forward, it was as if everybody went into a big, huge conference room with a whiteboard and they said, they wrote on the whiteboard, Donald Trump kicked out of office and put in jail. And they underlined it twice and said, all right, everybody, let's brainstorm. How do we get here? And they, any idea, any idea works. And they started listing ideas. We've done this in business before with with various topics of wanting to succeed at various things. So they've said, they said, okay, we'll write this all down on the board. Oh, this, 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 this. And they were writing everything they could down on this, on this board, theoretically, is what I'm picturing in my mind. Because for 10 years, we have sat here and watched them go down through this list and cross each one off the list. Russian collusion. What a joke that was. A joke. Donald Trump never colluded with Russia. He didn't even know anything about it. And yet, we spent taxpayer dollars to investigate it for two years. Remember how ridiculous that was? So, it, cross that off that, that whiteboard. Let's go to the next one. And the next, and the next, and the next they are literally at the end of their list now. There is nothing more they can do. Well, in the words of Tucker Carlson, the next step after this, if this doesn't work, they've been progressing to something. And the progressive nature of the way that the, everyone has been working with Donald Trump and, and fighting against him the progressive nature shows that eventually they're going to have to kill him. They have exhausted all of their faculties. They have exhausted everything they've ever done. They have tried everything. Nothing has worked. And eventually they will have to kill him. That's the progression of where we're headed. Now, will that actually happen? No. Am I threatening anything? No. This is all theoretical in my mind. But if you think that the Democrats haven't thought assassination or haven't actually tried to plan it, you are mistaken. They don't care. The only reason it hasn't happened yet, I believe, the only reason it hasn't happened yet is because right now it would make him a martyr. He's way too powerful. And they know that. He's, he is more popular than all of the Democrats combined. And they know that. And it kills them. Anyway, so Trump's in his court. Can't go anywhere. Can't do anything because this judge loves telling people what to do. It is painful to watch judges do their job. Painful to watch them wield their power. Oh, I had a I was on jury duty once and I missed jury duty. My fault, stupid mistake. I was young. I was only 20 years old and I showed up. Well, I didn't miss it. I showed up to jury duty and I went in and they said, Oh, that trial was yesterday. I looked at the paper. I said, Oh, you're right. The date was yesterday. Now, they all, I, it was innocent. I actually really did mess up the dates. Stupid me. Uh, it's on me. But he did say, the judge pulled me in, and they, they thought 100% that I had just planned this. That I just said, oh, if I come a day late, it'll show that I tried, but I didn't make it. So I had to appear before the judge and talk about the reasons why I didn't show up for jury duty. Well, I just said, 
Look, I messed up the day. I know that sounds like I'm making this up. I'm not. I me- I really genuinely did mess up the day. I even took work off. I did whatever I needed to do to be there. And I just I just messed up on the day. So anybody, any judge, and I said I'm sorry. Any anybody and any judge should have said uh you know what? I got you. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Let's get you. We'll get you on the next go around. But he didn't. He sentenced me to write a 5,000 word essay and submit it to the clerk within two days as to why I missed jury duty and the effect that that my actions had on the American judicial system. A 5,000 word essay to explain my actions to him. Now, my apology was sincere. Like I said, anybody would have said, oh, it's fine. Don't worry about it. You're good. Oh, but not this guy. It was the way that he reacted to my apology He's so above me. And he loved having the ability to make me go write this paper. And he said, if you don't write your essay and hand it in to the clerk by the deadline, a warrant will be issued for your arrest. (laughs) How ridiculous is this? Anyway, that's my, that's my, that's how I have dealt with that my experience with judges. This is the same thing. Trump Trump's dealing with a judge who is really into his power. Loves it. Oh, you want to go to your son's graduation? Do you? I don't think so. Uh, It's like we're dealing with villains, not judges. They should say, Oh, you know what? This is actually a case that, We started, we're going to give you that day off. Don't worry about it. We started this. This has been in the works for 10 years. We've been trying to get this case going. Uh, What's another day? You go ahead. Go to your son's graduation. You're fine. But they can't. And why is that? They hate Trump. They want to see him suffer. They want to see him suffer. And he was sitting in the courtroom the other day. He was sitting, he fell asleep. I, you know, I actually don't even make fun of Biden for this because I fall asleep all the time. I, one of my favorite pastimes is to watch movies with my children because I sleep. It's a great opportunity for me to fall asleep. So I I don't make fun of Biden for this either. And I don't make fun of Trump for this. Everybody on this planet sleeps. Fell asleep. And a lot of the comedians picked this up. One of who was Stephen Colbert. Oh, I'm sorry. I need to I need to say his pronouns. The comedian Stephen Colbert. Again, like I've said before, if I if I don't identify him as a trans comedian and identify him for what he wishes to identify himself as, then you would never know that he's a comedian because he is a non funny man who identifies as a comedian. So we have to announce his pronouns so that you'll know he is just not at all funny, but the comedian Stephen Colbert said, made fun of Trump for falling asleep. It's all they've got. It really is. It's all they've got. Liberals are figuratively throwing spaghetti against the wall to see what can stick. And none of it has yet. And it's killing them. It's eating them up. Now, I would love to talk about this and stay with you for another few hours. But sadly... I must leave you there. 
This has been American Mike for The Logic Dilemma, the show where we talk about American politics and how sometimes we don't think with our brains. We think with our emotions. In order to make sense of politics, we've got to be logical, America. Thanks for listening. <laughs>